the idea behind taking ownership of what was just a restaurant and a bar was to create a space where the neighborhood can come together and share with each other. The actual word Hidmo in Tigrinya, the language spoken in Eritrea where I'm from, is uh, they are the traditional huts that you would find in the countryside in villages. It literally means home, like a home. And uh, we like to say here that Hidmo means home, and we like that Hidmo is a home for lots of different things in the Central District. My um, Gabri. Thank you. Our doors are open to any individual organization or entity that exists th whose goal it is to build community. And just so you guys know, because it's an all ages show and the bar's not going to be open, I'm going to do last call like at 7, okay. which is in about 20 minutes. So. Yep. also a space where the untold stories can be told. Obviously, it's no secret that the Central District is being heavily gentrified right now. I mean, since 1983, this area has gone through drastic change. And so we thought it would be really good for everyone to have a chance to participate and have a voice in what happens. And we do it here through, you know, art and music and just allowing, you know, a space to exist that kind of honors that history. How are you all feeling tonight? <laughs> Damn straight, that's more like it. It's a community center without being a community center. I tell people like, this is, this is really a community center masqueraded as a restaurant. You know, there's kids that used to be scared from walking from Washington Middle School to their house at the Manor, just like three blocks away. And when they found that they could come in the Hidmo, they felt safe on that walk all of a sudden. Prophetically vised, division revised, rewritten, comprised, sort of devised, and neatly surmised and categorized, stole your prize without what demise was quite simply put, a token. Around our first year anniversary, we had a uh, community officer come in and tell us that some of the neighbors were feeling that our existence on 20th and Jackson's, Hidmo's existence on 20th and Jackson, was creating a negative vibe, basically. They called us an attractive nuisance. Well, we thought we were bringing all this art and all this music and providing a space for youth and providing a space for women. We found out that our neighbors thought we were a huge nuisance. We're trying to do positive things. Um, there's all ages events here um, in a time when there's not many things for kids to do after school. We're trying to make this a safe place in, um, in an unsafe world. We want to create more of those, um, and not just in the Hidmo, but throughout Seattle. Where are you? You're two minutes away? Okay, everything better be tuned and ready to go because you guys are supposed to be on like right now. <laughs> they were tuning the drums. They're on their way here. So he's two minutes away. Ah, oh, they almost gave me a heart attack. Oh my god. <laughs> I was born in a little country called Eritrea. It's in northeast Africa, north of Ethiopia, and right on the coast of the Red Sea. When I was born, <laughs> it was um, a, a province of Ethiopia, and there was a really, really bitter civil war happening, and, which my dad was um, a rebel fighter in. My, both my parents um, took all, at the time, six of us kids and left Eritrea. We were refugees in Khartoum, Sudan, and after you know, two and a half years, there was no way for us to get educated, and there was no way for us to just live outside and free as Christians in, a, in, in Sudan at the time. 
And so my dad gave up the idea of waiting out the war in Khartoum and applied for um, asylum in Germany and in the U.S. And our U.S. papers came in first. And so we ended up coming to Seattle. We were <laughs> settled in an apartment on Emma K. and McClellan in August of 1983. At the time, there were seven kids, two parents, and uh, my little baby brother Tommy was on the way, and he was actually born in that two-bedroom apartment on Emma K. and McClellan. Why are you not talking English to me? Why? Why not that of an English? In a lot of families that immigrate, there's this huge cultural divide between the kids and the parents because their kids are growing up in such a different culture than their parents are. And so one of the things that I started doing last year is um, running the East African Club at Mercer Middle School. I think it's important for them to have older East African women in their lives. Even though I don't speak in my mother's tongue, let there be no confusion about where I come from. You couldn't tell, huh, I'm Ethiopian, born in a foreign land, Scottish and Irish dad. He had more indigenous roots further back. I barely knew him, though. Grew up mostly in my mama's bag. Hidmo is not only the physical space on 20th and Jackson. It exists to increase dialogue and kind of broadens the dialogue. It allows more people to be involved in the dialogue. And if you don't know what to write, that's okay. But just put the pen to the page and write anyways. Even if you write, I don't know what to write, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've started a song saying, I don't know where to begin. That was the beginning of one of my favorite songs I've ever written. So. Sometimes you might not be a writer, but when you read other people's writings, or when you listen to other songs, you start thinking like, man, I got a story like that. So this is yours. I hope I do it justice. Um, she's very unhappy because her hair is very nappy. In case you don't feel the same, look at your face. She was told she was awesome, but she lost some. She didn't eat much food because she was from the hood. She didn't go to school, just stood on a stool. She didn't have much money, and it wasn't very funny. Yeah. Mine is called the Hitmo. Hey. <laughs> now the food in the case got a real good taste. You can tell that I'm happy by the look on my face. All my friends eat there, so the time is spent. In the kitchen where the cook is so confident. She can make you a dish so sophisticated. It might take a minute, so get some patience. I might order me some tea while I be waiting. It's so awesome tasting, totally amazing. And I ain't just trying to get you to eat there. You might not go, but you will see me there. <laughs> Ladies First is a project of CARA. It's the grassroots expression of our mission, which is to um, undermine rape and violence in our communities. Ladies First is a monthly all-women showcase that shares the art and the music and the stories of women. I like to sing uh, about the moon and the juna and the spring. Uh. I like to sing. Uh, I like to sing uh, about the moon and the juna and the spring. Uh. I like to sing. Uh, I like to sing uh, about the moon and the juna and the spring. Uh. I like to sing. Uh. It's not spring because it's still snowing. I've never been to a place in Seattle that has been more like. Just, just, you just feel at home when you come in. Dancing machine with my right foot left. The crowds are always so different and it's like all ages. Like this is a place that I've been waiting for for a long time. <laughs> like the mixture, they're all people from all over town that just are here to just chill and it's stuff like village. that. It's the village, it's the village. Exactly. Man. What happened to community? Hip hop is not a fraternity. I'm not an accessory to your crime or river bank to your flow. Your stream of sound is polluted. Have you forgotten the source of your own current? Currently hip hop is a monopoly. They don't want us to pass go. Step up to be heard, step back to reflect. We in the right direction, but we ain't there yet. So what comes next? First look us in the eye. More signs in the music, time to realize. Step up to be heard, step back to reflect. We in the right direction, but
we thought just our existence was a community building thing, so we didn't need, we didn't feel the need to like say, hey, Hidmo, we build community here. But going through that experience with our neighbors, we decided to organize an open house. Well, the open house turned into, you know, somebody just kind of grabbed the mic and started saying, well, you know, just pouring their heart out about how important HIDMO was to them. And then another person got on the mic and another person, and then somebody who'd never even been at HIDMO was just like, I feel, you know, I feel the love and this and that. And so, and the neighbors were present, and the assistant city attorney was present, and the police officers were present. Us going through that experience resulted in, and thinking about what we could possibly do about it, because gentrification is obviously such a huge issue. And so we came up with something called the Hidmo Community Empowerment Project. It's, uh, we're gonna canvas the neighborhood and find out what issues that people are thinking about. We're just gonna take on a different topic to talk about as neighbors every month. And so say if like safety is an issue, what does safety mean to each individual person? And depending who the person is, where they're coming from, where they live, how long they've lived here, what race they are, what gender they are, you know, that safety is gonna mean something very different. And so trying to find out if there is a way that we can all kind of live together and get to know each other and, you know, build a sense of community where it doesn't seem like a strong sense of community exists anymore. My mother's homeless, my brother's hopeless, never had a daddy, so I guess he don't matter much. Most of the people that come into the hood mo have come from marginalized of the marginalized communities. Our lives are not pretty, our histories are not pretty. We spoke of peace, he pulled out his peace and made everyone get down on their knees. Those stories are here and you can't make that look good, you know? But what is good is that if you really want a community, then those voices need to be heard. And so if the neighbors want a model for things that are possible in the city of Seattle, they should truly look to the hood mall. I always told her, like, if we ever blow up and make it really big, like, we're going to give Hidmo the best that we got, because we owe Hidmo basically our career. So. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Love Hidmo. I know. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's just the sunshine after the storm. Hey. We strive to get free like my whole style Soul faith, just a little bit of know-how Music raised me the grace of my first child It's ageless, y'all wanna ask God how She put me back together and release what comes out My mouth, cause it ain't me, I thank she For these livers came through and they saved me Work is love and it forced out to face me And of course I've been lazy before But lately been chasing my heart through a war Till the day comes and it don't hurt no more In a way, y'all, I ain't never been poor Even though I never had no money to show i've come to know that this flow is priceless no money can buy it and no rapper can bite it we spit good medicine it shows if you inspired love work live life